you won't hit it with the boat. Prop. Yeah. Tap it with the prop. I haven't found it for ages, but I don't even know if it's still there, but it used to be there, so I just don't go there. Is that something you look for with bass? Yeah, I want current brakes. Okay. They generally say in behind somewhere like that there. So I've always felt that in the fishing industry, the hand making of whether it's rods or lures or any kind of fishing uh, gear has always been this really niche area of the fishing industry that I personally haven't dealt with a lot, partly because it's always come across as a little bit complicated. I do though remember one of my first kayak fishing tournament memories where I met a guy called Scott Lovig and I remember him on stage talking about the rods that he used and apparently they were the best rods that he had ever used. Skip forward six months as I met more people on the tournament scene, I would learn that multiple world champion slash Australian champion Richard Summerton was using them, a guy called Chris Burbage at the time was using them and those guys were winning round after round. They were, they were definitely the best on the scene at the time and everybody seemed to be using these sets of rods. So at the start of 2022 when Steve Duff announced that Duff Rods would be coming out with a new flagship line of uh, rods. I thought what a great opportunity to take this channel and check out some of the uh, range that is coming out. Now I was interested to see what the craze was about but realistically before we get into this I should really say duff rods aren't custom fishing rods they're actually handmade production rods so he's got a team of anglers that go out that test a certain number of blanks and a certain number of prototypes that he's got and then he gets the best of the best in the feedback and then designs a series of rods. They are all handmade here in Australia, they're just not custom made. They are also a medium to high end rod. You'll find the medium series of all the Duff rods uh, in some retail stores, but the high end rods that he sells, you'll only find via his store direct, whether that's online or via email or Facebook. So in a nutshell, I decided to meet the guy, understand who he was, and then talk about his rods. How long have you been making rods for? Uh, I made my first rod when I was 13. It was high school, and my grandfather taught me. Oh, wow. Was he a fisherman himself, was he? Yeah, he was. At Fishing in my side of that family, it's more religion than it is a pastime. I've won some tournaments over, over the time. Now I won a grand final in 2006, which got me on the AFC for 07 and 08. Grew up in Newcastle. Um, used to spend 16 plus weeks at Southwest Rocks every year because yeah. uh, we have family up there. Um, and yeah, we'd just chase anything. As a kid, we used to catch brim on bait in Lake Macquarie and the Hunter River. My love for brim fishing came as a kid. We used to get the bus down to Spears Point and wade the flats at Spears Point, throwing little um, Halco scorpions and whatnot. Way, way, way back then. When. It's funny you mention that because Spears Point is still a very popular, like a uh, brim fishing place. You do a yeah. lot of Mac round and there's bound to be somebody. Yeah. At least check it out, right? That's yeah, cool. oh, any, any Lake Macquarie tournament, it's instead of getting the bus down there and walking the edges, you put the boat in and you drive the boat straight there. And uh, So we're obviously in Gippsland now. When did you move down from Newcastle? I moved to Melbourne in 97. Um, and then we were in Melbourne until 11 years ago when we moved down to where we are now. Um, why? Because of the brim fishing. Really? Yep. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, it's in my, even then, in my opinion, this is the mecca of brim fishing in this country, no matter whether you're mainland or not. Why do you think that? Fish are bigger, the waterways so big that the rewards are there when, when you chase. If, if you can follow the fish and you know what their, their traits are of where they go at certain times of the year, you get the rewards. There's not many places where you can go out and catch 20 fish over 40 in a morning session. Yeah. Um, and that happens here quite regularly. So, so how often do you go fishing? Obviously you moved here for the brim fishing specifically, but how, how many days in the water do you think you do? These days it's probably only two days a week. Yep. Um, and most of that's bass fishing. I've got this love-hate relationship. I, I can go bass fishing and, and catch them, but it, it, in tournament situations at the moment, my head's not right around it, so that's something that, it's a challenge for me, and I like to chase challenges. Alright, so tell me about the boat. 
this little girl I won back in 2006. Really? Yeah. Um, won the Brim Grand Final on the Richmond River at Ballina. And I've never, I've had the opportunity to swap it out, but I've, I like the boat too much, so I've never swapped it out. I've repowered it. It's been rewired a couple of times. Was it new when you got it? Brand new. So, so 16 years? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you won it 2006. Have you have you used it the entire time? It's just been your primary boat since then. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Haven't haven't changed anything in that regard to it. The, the main thing is living where we live and the tournaments we do are the whole way up the east coast. I don't want to be towing a 20 foot boat up and back and up and back at 18 feet. It sits on a double bogey trailer really nice mm. sits behind the car really nice mm. it's just a lot easier yeah yeah there's a big difference between an 18 foot boat and a 20 foot boat as well in terms yeah. of size i thought when i was considering buying mine i thought the 20 foot was way too big for yeah for this type of fishing in particular where we are right rivers and stuff like it's it's a big boat to to get around it's a dream boat obviously but it's it's big it's a whole lot of boat yeah I was living living on the gippy lakes it's it's a lot of little creeks that a lot of people don't really know about that have got really shallow entrances into them that you can't take a big boat in them. But I can get this in there. Yeah, right. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to do with it is put a hydraulic jack plate on it. And that's not for trimming the boat out and going faster or anything. That's for lifting the motor vertical to go into some of those places. And is that type of the type of fishing that you, that you like? Yeah. Yeah, the back creek kind yeah. of. Yeah, right. How long have you been making rods for? Uh, I made my first rod when I was 13. I'm assuming when you made that first rod when you were 13, it was like a glass rod or something yeah, or yeah. other. Yeah, so w what do you think the biggest change in the gear has been over the over The, the, the biggest years? change in anything is carbon fibre. The guides evolve as they evolve. Like instead of having old stainless, we're now you know, top of the line. There's a Torzite guy with titanium frames so forth. But the biggest change is what you can do with carbon fiber. So for a lot of my rods, I, I have them made as a blend. So it's a blend of a certain tonnage into another tonnage. And tonnage is the percentage of carbon fiber in the- That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's your strength. Okay. So the higher the number, the softer the rod will get. But it's the main change. The carbon becomes lighter, it becomes stronger, it becomes single directional or it becomes unidirectional which means single directional it will only go up and down on the axis unidirectional will go on four axis mm. if you try and take a single direction carbon sideways it'll break mm. unidirectional not a problem you know i have all of my blanks are made unidirectional um, they're all made to last. I have rods and I have clients that have got rods that are 10 and 12 year olds and still act as the same as the day that they bought them. Um, it's the guides that you sometimes need to, need to change out on them. If you, if you had a 3 16th frame with an SIC ring or something, those frames may be corroded. A titanium frame won't corrode. Yeah. Um, a recoil guide, whether you like them or dislike them, they will not corrode. They will, they've got 100% memory where they'll bend and come straight back into shape every time and there's nothing to break on them. Mm. Um, so that sort of technology is evolving through. Handy for people that are prone to breaking things on car doors or stacking heaps of rods in an area, right, those yeah. guides? As well as the non-destructive side to them, they're also the most sensitive thing that you can put on a fishing rod. Mm. Because they're titanium, the most sensitive metal, because they're a wire, that runs straight into the blank. You can feel everything that comes back through it. So why would I want on the end of my springboard a light? Like, like it's, it's mainly blank recovery. So the more weight you've got towards the end of the rod, the more the rod's gonna slap. The less weight you've got there, and if the blanks of a high quality, it should go down with the cast, come back up, and then settle. There shouldn't be any of uh, this flopping around. It should just bang, bang, dum, and stop. And what are the benefits of that? Why do you want to? Run it's a lo longer cast. Okay. Longer cast, better sensitivity through through the cast as well. Do you find more accuracy in, in the cast you, as well? You will because if the if the rod's slapping around, it means it's pulling back on the line, letting it go, pulling back on the line, which means it's going to stop the lure from getting to where it's got to get to. 
um, and you'll come up short all the time. Yeah. If it's if the recovery's in a three point recovery, you should be able to hit a garbage tin lid every time you cast. So for the last four months, I've been playing around with two rods. One bait cast, the rod that is specifically designed for jig fishing. You can see there's a uh, blue and black jig uh, tied on there at the moment. And the other one is a spinning rod designed for cranks. And honestly, the more that I've used these rods, the more I've actually enjoyed them. To start with the positives, the grip and the handle on both of these feel really nice in the hand to hold. And realistically, I haven't gone with this type of handle before. I've definitely used them, but I've got to admit, I really found it comfortable from the get-go. And I think that's a little bit unusual because I think this handle I have probably had in a couple of rods somewhere along the, the way and just not been my preference. I'm not sure if it's the, the you know, the handle and the butt combination or, or what's going on here, but uh, it really does fit nicely in the hand. I think the blank on both the rods is outstanding and they've got really nice parabolic effects when they're loaded up. But aside from that parabolic effect, I did notice that the taper is just a little bit different. So the rod is typically a little bit thicker than some of the other rods that I use here, but I don't necessarily mind that. It just means that it, it fits in the hand, especially if you've got larger hands nicely. The guides as well are definitely worth a bit of a chat because the guides, the recoil guides that are on these rods, it's the first time that I've used them and I've got to admit, I think they're actually pretty cool. Honestly, in terms of sensitivity, about them being more sensitive or less sensitive, I can't really fault them. I didn't really notice a huge amount, partly because I think I use straight through fluorocarbon for the majority of the time. But I tend to be the type of guy that will uh, break guides as they get in and out of that glove box of the boat or, or the rod locker, I should say. Um, so the fact that they're malleable, they move around and they snap back to the position where they should be, I think is a real positive. Just for a guy like me that tends to trash his gear just a little bit, anything that makes my gear last longer is definitely a good thing. Lastly, in terms of the rod, cosmetically, I really like the rawness of the rod. They're definitely handmade and you can tell that they're handmade. Even though every one of them is a production rod and is the best of the rods that they are to be produced, I can look in really closely and see where Duff has put the sticker and then laminated or glued or, or coated over the, uh, over the top of the sticker. To some extent, it's like having a bit of personality in the rod where you can see some of the brush strokes and you can see the imperfections. Now, imperfections is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? The rawness of a handmade rod is something pretty cool. Even though their production, I can say that this rod, this rod right here, this one's mine, it's got a bit of personality. And the serial number that's located underneath it tells Steve that this is the one of a kind rod and this is the specific rod that he has made. Now, he actually records all the rods in a booklet as well. So if I have trouble with this rod or maybe I snap the tip and I want it remade, I simply quote to him the serial number of this rod. He goes to his book, he looks it up and reproduces another rod for me that's exactly the same. And I think that is really, really cool. That uniqueness and I guess rod personality is something that uh, is missing from a lot of production rods. That personal connection with your gear, I think is, is pretty cool and definitely a good thing to have. Now, while I've got the rods out, a quick segue and a giveaway. A big shout out goes to Steve Duff from Duff Rods for providing two rods to one lucky viewer in a week to give away. These Apex rods aren't cheap. The base model goes for $595 and we're gonna give two of them away on this channel. Now to enter, yes, you need to be a subscriber, you need to like the, the video and comment below on what your favorite grip is, whether that is cork, uh, EVA, plastic, metal, carbon fiber, insert, whatever material you want, comment that below and let me know what your favorite excuse me, handle makeup is. The second thing you need to do is be a member of the channel. Membership for the channel helps me stay independent and costs as little as a dollar a week. All you need to do is hit that join button on the channel and that'll give you access to pre-release videos and the giveaways that we have on this channel every month. And I should say we've got some big ones coming up with after and there's a fair bit of gear on this boat that is about to be given away. So do those two things and in one week from today, one of you guys will be walking away with two rods from Duff of the apex range of your choosing. One of the things I've noticed with the apex rods is the handle yep. as well. So talk to me about why you've gone carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber handle, I always like the look of the carbon fiber handle um, from when they came out with different brands years and years ago. But the one thing I didn't like about them were they were slippery. You know, the best thing I like about high density EVA, like this, is the wetter it gets, 
the slimier it gets, mm. the more your hands actually stick to it. Carbon fibre, being what it is, is going to be a slippery product. And I love the look of it, but it was always... I've seen blokes cast rods with carbon fibre handles, and they just go straight out of their hands. Gotcha. <laughs> the whole, whole thing's in the drink. So I wanted to come up with a carbon fibre handle that was grippy as well as looked good. And this, this has achieved it. Gotcha. So... Whether they're wet or whether they're dry, your hands don't slide up and down the carbon fiber. Oh, right. Is there any of these little pockets? Okay. Uh, in the nose, that we uh, I'm gonna wait. So, and instead of walking them out, just jiggle. Let it set, yep, that's it, that's it. Nothing more. It's just a jiggle. If you start walking them, they Walking's a summer thing. Yeah, right. Jiggling's every other time of the year. So tell me about the apex range then. How many rods are you making in the range? So, bait casters, there's everything from a four curlo to a, so there's a four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, and a swim bait rod. Okay. So covering everything from bass through to cod barra. Yeah. And in the spin range, it's, um, there's a one to four curlo, Two to five, a three to five, and a three to six, okay. uh, and a four to seven. So the, the so what then for for an angler? Why would I choose a an apex over broken bones or vice versa? Cost not an issue. Okay. The the main difference is for some people love a skeleton seat. They like the feel of it in their hands. They love the feel of the blank in their hands, that knobbly touch. Other people don't like it. They like their hands to be full of a real seat and a rear grip. The whole ranges though, once we talk my production range, whether it's broken bones, whether it's the apexes, whether it's G2s, they're all guide related on price. Now there's some of them where I'll only do them in, say a, a gunmetal alphanite guide, and there's some where we'll put full titanium frame guides on it. And anything that's titanium torsided or SIC is gonna be a lot dearer than what the alphanite system is and it's just through price points through the guides the guides are where the money are you make all the rods handmade they're not made imported from anywhere. no 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 everything's everything's made here and every rod that if someone owns a duff rod they've all come out of my hands there's no other one running around here everything's made here i'm a big believer in buying australian using australian um you know we've we've got options to go overseas to buy things like clothing that sort of thing. I buy local. Does it cost me more? Yeah, it does. But I still buy buy local for all our Duff Rods clothing because it supports someone local here. Our signage, I could have stickers made overseas if I wanted. I have it made here. Does it cost me more? Yeah, it does. But I'm supporting a local. It's the same as I'm asking people to support what I do, being an Australian made product, made here by my hands, nobody else. I noticed a lot of like the rods when you when you when I picked the apexes off you they were had a cloth yep. wrap to them. Is that normal? Is that that's just how I that's how I send them out. Okay. That's the best protection that I can put them in to send them out. Yeah. Um, and they all arrive with that, that yeah. cloth on them. Yeah. Right, our legends. That's a wrap. That's all I've got for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember the giveaway. Stay safe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>